Hey team, I wasn't going to do a video today, but Amazon jumped the gun and released our survival series books, our non-fiction survival series books. So we're going to do one, try to get it out tonight so you can have all the links that you need to uh, to snatch this thing up. We're also going to do a Q&A and we're going to talk about another non-fiction book that you have to have right after this. It's finally here, Volume 1 in the EA Survival Series, Building Resilience Together. It's going to give you a comprehensive understanding of forming and maintaining a mutual assistance group, where and how to find members, and how to conduct a group in general. It doesn't matter if your group is big or small, by the time you finish this manual, it'll run like a finely tuned organization. Available now on Amazon. Well, there's the manual in the 30 second promo video. We're going to talk more about it, some of the stuff that's in it and why you need it. But before we do that, I want to address this theory that goes on in the prepping community. We call it the gray man theory. And, and if you don't know what that is, that's the theory that you're just going to blend in with everybody else. That you're going to stay under the radar and you're going to go about your normal existence like nothing ever happens. That's not going to work. It's going to work for the first two weeks. And when the gray man theory was first introduced, that's movement early on in a SHTF event. That's never meant for a prolonged event. Some of the reasons why the gray man theory won't work in a prolonged event. As everybody around you is getting skinnier and you're maintaining body weight or you're slightly losing at, at, at a lower rate than your neighbors, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to recognize that, especially if they're starving especially if they're desperate. So going along with the, the gray man theory, uh, there's a whole whole concept concept that we're just going to do this as a lone wolf. It's just going to be me and my family. We don't need anybody else. That's going to get you dead. It's gonna, you're going to make it through a hurricane type event. You're going to make it through an earthquake type event. But a true prolonged event, you need a community. You need a tribe. Sooner or later, you're going to have to garden. Sooner or later, you're going to have to sleep. Who's going to be pulling security for you? Your wife and kids and dogs? It's not going to happen. Just to maintain my 10-acre plot of land, if I were to pull security full-time, I need 25 to 30 guys, 25 to 30 people that are capable of pulling security. So the fact that you think the wife, the kid, Uncle John, and your dogs are going to pull security and you guys are going to live ha happily ever after while the world around you is going to crap. It's a myth. It's a fallacy and it's going to get you and your family killed. Look, I get it. Pete, you're fear mongering. Stop doing it. Well, that's where this book by Jonathan Hollerman comes into, comes into play. Survival theory number two. If you don't know who Jonathan Hollerman is, you really need to look him up and see the important work he's done with the EMP commission. Um, as, I think, I think recently it was somewhere in 2020, they conducted a whole bunch of war simulations. And Lieutenant General Quas said the next battlefield will be in the electromagnetic spectrum. What does that mean? If you don't know what an EMP is, or you're just, you, you just want to put it down inside of your memory banks and you don't want to think about it, it's a real thing. And the fact of the matter is, Russia, China, North Korea, they all know that they can't take the United States traditionally. They're not going to come in with tanks, planes, and bombs and and beat us. It's just not going to happen. So Lieutenant Qua says the way they're going to do it is with an electromagnetic pulse. And I'll go ahead and put a link to the congressional EMP hearings that they had, the papers that they wrote, and 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 what they said about an EMP and the likelihood of the event happening. You know, what's troubling about this is the congressional report goes on to say that within the first year of an EMP or a grid, any grid down scenario, uh, whether it be viruses taking the grid down or an EMP, 90% of Americans will perish. 90%. So how is that even possible? We've got our government there. They're going to come in. According to Hollerman in his book, during these simulations, continuity of government 
loses effect and becomes non-existence for the most part after two weeks of a grid down event. There's no way for them to communicate. If you think 911, you can call 911 and the cop and the fire department are going to get there. It's not going to happen. You're on your own. Okay, the systems are down. The cars aren't running. The fire trucks aren't rolling. There's no one at dispatch to even take your call. So do you think these first responders, and rightfully so, do you think they're going to stay on the job? No, they're not going to stay on the job. They're going to go home and take care of their families. Okay, rightfully so. That's what anybody would do. That's what anybody should do, I should say. And, and maybe those people that are single and they don't have families, they don't have to get, what are they going to last a month? And realize that they're not doing anything in the job and they're going to go, they're going to leave. The fact of the matter is, after a prolonged event, continuity of government's gone. Civil unrest has started without rule of law is, is now taking effect. So your biggest fear in the world, if you're not on the same page, becomes your neighbor. Who's starving, by the way? Who's deprived of food? And I could go through the number of uh, experiments that were done in uh, that, that Holloman brings up in his book, but I'm not going to do it. Go buy the book. I'll tell you what, buy the book before you buy my manual. I'll put a link in for the book. Why? Because as soon as you buy the book, you're going to understand the need to have a community, understand the need to have at least your neighborhood all on the same page, or else you're going to be one of the 90%. All right, guys, like I promised earlier, we're going to do a little bit of question and answer. Now, off to my left, you can't see her, but um, Mrs. Robert Tucci's uh, off to my side. I tried to get her to get on camera. She absolutely will not do it. Um, she says her hair is not done, her nails aren't done. I don't know. I don't understand it all. But um, with that being said, she's just going to go ahead and read off some questions that you guys sent in, and then I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Go on, Mama. So the first question and the most asked question is, why did you decide to put out a nonfiction book? So why did I decide to put out a nonfiction book? Well, you remember I went to Mountain Readiness a month or so ago, and a bunch of people came up to the to the table and they said, because they were having like 70 classes a day. And when they came up to my table, a few of them said, what am I going to learn from your fiction books? And book one has a, a lot of learning material in it. But it it doesn't, it's not a manual, it's not a how-to, and not to say that this is an actual how-to manual, but it does give some insight on how to get some things started and where to research and how to how to just go ahead and start the process of, of being prepared. Good? Got it. All Good. Right. The next question was, if there is a particular subject people would like you to write about, in these different volumes that you're doing, how can they ask you? So hit me up on Facebook. I've got a number of ways to to get uh, to get questions to me. You can uh, go ahead and sign up for my blog. A lot of the questions could probably be answered in my blog. I'll put links up for all that. Facebook is huge. We all know that. And then most importantly, especially for for this actual um, genre, is YouTube. Get on YouTube, comment on some of the videos you're seeing, and then I'll address them in future videos. Perfect. Thank you. What scenario are you most afraid of? What scenario am I most afraid of? I wouldn't say afraid of a scenario. Which scenario do I prepare for? Civil unrest. Because without question, no matter what the emergency is, what's going to ensue without rule of law is civil unrest. And, and like I said in, in some of my fiction books, you can't understand what a normal person will do and what type of acts they will commit when they see their own family starving. It's unthinkable. Studies have been done, and um, it's, it's a bad situation. So civil unrest, uh, up to two weeks, I mentioned earlier in the video, up to two weeks after a major event, continuity of government ends. What's continuity of government? That means the continuation of government services, right? Once that ends and people realize there's nobody coming to help you, what they're going to end up doing is rioting. We've got a small taste of that in the summer of 2023. So civil unrest, especially when it comes without a rule of law, that's going to be our biggest fear. That's when neighbor turns against neighbor. Okay, and when do you expect the next volume to be out? 
the next volume in the Survival Series? Yes. So EA Survival Series, Volume 1's on the shelves now. You can pick it up on Amazon. I'll put a link up. Volume 2, we're gonna, it's done. We're proofreading it now. And we're going to see what kind of response we have from Volume 1. Volume 2 is going to be on the starting to start get in the essentials of survival. You know, water, food, shelter, security. Okay. Those are going to be the next four. So Volume 2 is done. That's going to be on water. And uh, we'll see what kind of response we get from this one. And we'll put this one right out. Okay. Cool. And biggest question is, when is Book 3 of Eden Series coming out? Book 3 of the Eden Series. So we got Book 1, Three Days to Eden, right? We got Eden Under Threat. We haven't come up with a name for Volume 3 yet. So if you've got any ideas and you've read the first two, start thinking about send them in, send them in to me. Book 2, the idea for that title uh, came from you guys. So send me some ideas. I got a kind of a, a basic or general idea I think I'm going to go with. But if you guys give me something better, I'll go with it. I'm not afraid. But to answer the question, we got 11 chapters done. Uh, we're proofing as we go, so we're going to get some of those out to beta readers. We've already started that process on some of the earlier chapters. So I'm thinking certainly September-ish, end of August, I'm hoping. So that's it. Any more for now, or you want to just hold it there, and we'll hit the rest later? Let's hold it there. Hold it there, the lady says. All right, guys. Like Miss Holly uh, tells me, the YouTube algorithm is very important. So like subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I hate even asking, but it is important, and that's how we get our word out. And like always, I appreciate you guys, and thanks for tuning in.